how I want to make, make sure we set our agenda clearly. So what I really want to cover tonight, tonight our goal is very simple. Our goal is to cover BPM. This is one of the essential skill, I would say required skill from BA slash PM slash Scrum perspective. So if you are going for product owner or if you are going for Scrum master, this is one of the required skills. Now, most of the time what happens when you are going for such kind of role, BA, PM, product owner and Scrum, BPM is one of the easy way to communicate your message. As a leader, BPM makes big difference and I'll show you why. When you are going through this journey, today, tonight, we are also going to cover about how would we do business analysis. When I say business analysis means any time when you start a new job, right, you will start with the problem statement. You will have a problem statement that, you know, something is not working. So something is not working. When you say something is not working, that will not be very clear. Right? Your manager, your hiring manager, maybe your stakeholder will say, this is not working. Or this is a challenge. Or this is the issue. Something is not working or some issue is there. Right? You are hired to do analysis for that. So when you start this analysis, there are a few things you will do. First, you will understand what they do currently, which is called as is, as is analysis. Now, this is one of the easy topic very powerful topic i'm sure you will enjoy it and once you understand this thing you can apply it to almost every project every product every company so good news about it once you know this thing you can lifetime use this skill as is analysis is one of the easy way to start now when you start as is analysis there are various tools we're going to learn tonight one of the tool is called swat because you need to know where we are currently right where we where do we stand very important topic, we'll cover that. Second thing you talk about is called stakeholder analysis. Stakeholder analysis means what do you think people think about the problem? So example, if I ask you come and work, there are people will be there in office, maybe customers, maybe vendors, you will be talking to them. Think about what they think about you. Well, what they think about the current situation. They like it, they don't like it, they want suggestions, they want some improvement. So you kind of do stakeholder analysis, which will give clarity about the real problem. Because sometimes problem may not be real. When somebody says it's not working, so when you go to the doctor and say, I'm having a pain. Doctor says, where is the pain? I say, everywhere is the pain. So doctor say, can you show me? And when doctor do analysis, doctor will do labs, they will do various tests. And after a lot of research, they will say, this is the problem. Make sense or no? So same thing, business analysis. I have humble request, don't jump to the conclusion. You might know the solution, but hold your horses. In America, we say, right, hold your horses. Why? Because when you jump to the conclusion, you most likely be wrong. Because without understanding symptoms, if you provide solution, it's not going to work. So as a business analyst, you need to make sure you do your clear analysis. And when you do that, make sure you do not have bias. Bias means before you start the problem, you have a solution in your mind, then all we call confirming bias. Speak with me. Confirming bias. Confirming bias means like example. Should I do job? Should I apply for a job? Your answer is yes, I want to apply for a job. And then everything you will say towards applying for a job because you are starting confirming bias. This is human nature. So example, if I want to buy TV, yes, I want to buy TV. And you are the one who's going to provide the evidence why should i buy to you right so as a business analyst you will be independent you will try to learn you will try to understand the problem the way it is rather than you perceive it make sense you need to analyze that once you analyze part of the analysis you will do some visual aspects so you will kind of describe describe the process using bpm which is called business business process modeling. This is one of the important skills which you all need to know. Is and that BPM is BPM business process management? No, modeling. So 
the modeling means you use symbols. You will use symbols, some graphs, some charts. So the symbols will help us to do the work. So we are going to use the various symbols. Part of that exercise, we're going to use a tool called Draw.io. And people will ask you, have you done as is analysis? Have you done any kind of business process modeling? Right? Did you do that? So such kind of skill, we can write in your resume. We can also discuss in your interview. Once you do as is, then you will think about solution recommendation or solution option. Solution options means you need to have at least three options. The reason you need the three options, because if you provide only one option, it's not an option. It's called decision. Do you guys agree or not? If you just provide one option, then it's called decision. So you provide three options and then you provide pros and cons for each options. This is called option recommendation. Option recommendation. Now, as a BA, you got to have a skill where you have option recommendations. And from there, you kind of influence stakeholder to pick one option out of three, right? And that is called your to be option. To be means futuristic view, future. You, you are showing that where you want to be in the future. As is, is your current problem. So now you have two type of situation, current problem and your future problem. Make sense or not? Now from this journey, you will have another word comes called gap analysis. So that is also very important. People will ask in interview as well as in a job, you will do that. So now let me draw what I'm talking about and then we'll have some question answers. So when you start your job, this is your timeline. So when you start your timeline, your as is might be here. This is your timeline. It means you have here, this is T1. And then this is your as is, right? Now your futuristic view means you wanna go here, which is your to be. Now between this, there's a significant gap. If the gap is big, then it will take a long time to fit, fit that gap, right? So it will take longer time and it will cost money. So this is a cost also, resource also, you can consider that. So time, cost, resource, it will consider. So when you are going through this journey like that, you need to think about overall how long will it take and how much money or resources it will take. So that's what the reason to be and as is with between that gap analysis. So when you do gap analysis, you identify, should I do build something? Should I build? Should I borrow something, right? Or leverage something, right? So build, buy, borrow, like that type of thing. So you will try to kind of do that analysis. Again, we'll talk about all interesting things with videos, some labs, some group discussions and all. Now questions. So this to be mm -hmm. is, Will be will depend on the, the recommend, option recommendation that we are giving or the or the decision that they will make out of those three options. Very good question. So let's example. <clears throat> if I say I want to buy TV, just an example, because current status I do not have a TV. Let's assume I do not have a TV or I have a TV which is 20 years old, right? Or I have old TV, right? That's the current situation. Now someone asks me, hey, uh, could you tell me what kind of TV I should buy? In that situation, I will look for three options right? Three different TVs, which I should buy. So Ahad, what, which, which TV would you recommend? Um, Why? Because of the Uh-huh. So one is Samsung. What other you will recommend? Um, I will also recommend Vizio. Vizio, good. And third? Um, LG. LG. Now from this, if you need to compare which one is best, how would you? How would you? I did not ask you which one. How would you, how would you compare? So basically, I will compare the TV visual. Um, uh -huh. How the TV how cost the aspect, cost feature aspect, aspect, quality aspect, right? Longevity okay. aspect. You will compare and then you will decide. So to be is selected from available option by comparing pros and cons. You are not just going to select that. You will compare pros and cons. So you will create a nice table like this, right? We'll talk about that in a few minutes. You will say here you will put Samsung, Vizio, maybe here you can put LG and then say cost wise, who is winning? Uh, you know, flexibility wise, who is winning? Feature wise, who is winning? And then whoever has the base scoring, you select it and that's your to be. Samsung has, mm -hmm. it costs more, but it, the quality is better. Mm -hmm. And LG, it, it costs less, but the quality is a little less too. 
very good very very good okay so any questions from phone rachel archita anyone any questions um i learned about swot analysis mm -hmm. so it's like strengths weaknesses mm -hmm. opportunities and threats right we'll talk in two minutes but any questions on phone so far people on phone can you guys hear me just give me thumbs up yes we can no question okay perfect perfect yes so these options the BA will present to the stakeholder right After yes and that is your today's homework so today my humble request is participate actively because this skill can make future from you so like example many of you just take a practical example again forget about entire world think about your own situation do I have a job current state I don't have a job future step I want a job then you have three type of career right maybe BA career Maybe Scrum Master career, maybe Product Owner career, right? Yes or no? Then you will say, which one I should go? I can be more suitable, right? Or maybe I can be more successful. Do you guys agree or not? Let's say you just, for example, you select, I, I want to go for BA role. Yes or no? So now your future is BA. Current, I don't have a job, right? So now there is a gap. Now what is the gap? Maybe skill gap, right? Yeah. Maybe experience gap, right? Maybe tooling gap, maybe certification gap, maybe something which is not I have. So now I need to prepare. If the gap is big, it will take extra time. If gap is small or less, it will take less time. Make sense or not? Every project, you will do this type of analysis because you will be asked very simple question. How long and how much, right? As soon as you provide some kind of improvement, the question will be natural. How long and how much? What is how long? This is the way you define how long. If I know that it's going to take time, then that's a T. And how much is the resource or your dollar? So you cannot just answer. You need to tell what kind of jump you are making from current to future. And that is what to be means. Sounds good? So it's a pretty interesting topic. I personally enjoy this topic when I study. I also spend... Um, in one of my management course, I have taken the course called Business Process Improvement, BPI, Business Process Improvement. So as a management course, you need to do that. So if you want to be a, in a business guy, this is one of the most essential skills that you need to have called Business Process Improvement. Means wherever you go, as a business person, you have to improve because your salary comes based on your improvement. Your salary comes based on your improvement. So most people, what they think, oh, I will be doing job. But as a business analyst, you will be doing improvement. Make sense or no? Product improvement, process improvement, technology improvement, people improvement. The more improvement you do, more salary you get, more opportunity you get. But more, most people have a like kind of wrong impression that I will be doing job, I will be doing function, I will be doing ABC task. Those days are gone. Those days are gone where you will be doing ABC task, where someone will tell you to. Nowadays, no one will tell you. No one will tell you what to do. But, but you have to do your part well. And that is the reason business skill, which you are learning in this class, will be profoundly helpful. Because you can apply everywhere, every project, every team, every, every engagement you will be applying. So this is the reason you should think about this skill. Yes. And uh, we're learning about business process right now. Right? We are learning and we will be doing with labs. So we will be going through the lab, making sure we understand that. So if somebody asks questions, let's you, what is process means to you? What is process means? Define process. Process uh, is, I can say, the steps uh -huh. for what it takes. Very good. To reach a certain... Very nice. So process means series of steps. So if I go here, the million dollar question you will have, what is process? So process means series of steps. Do you guys agree or not? Now the question is, if I do series of steps, then I will do certain things which is called, I have input. Maybe I'm taking some raw material. Maybe I'm taking some people help, some investment, and then I'm going to do process. When I do process, I will get output. Do you guys agree or not? If this output, I don't like it, what does it mean? My process did not do good job. Do you agree or not? Every process is something like you are taking input. Input means your current knowledge, input means raw material, input means your skills, and then you are applying that. Most company what they do, they hire people. 
and then they do process for process they do product development so if you do product development then that's your process but if that process is not good you will not have a good quality product it means output is good bad product means you're not gonna win so not all process will give you better product do you guys agree or not not all process will provide effective output so what are you going to do if you realize that output is not good or output is not producing the better quality or better value what you would you what would you do change the process change the process then the question has million dollar questions how would you monitor the process how would you monitor the process how would you measure the process so how would you monitor the process how are you going to do measurement of the process help me out okay how would you monitor and measure the process so maybe you had like graphs people on phone you can also participate okay the more you participate more you enjoy this class you can look at the you can look at the graphs about how to and like what are the sales like mm -hmm. the basis and what kind of waste is the company doing uh -huh. to so so, that so number of number of orders right maybe you can measure number of orders number of right orders. Sales. total total cost yes rachel do you have a guideline that you follow very good so your steps you follow perfect it is go ahead it is and track it track it yep perfect so anything else we can do for process monitoring we make the ads first mm -hmm. and then so you can monitor how long it takes. Do you guys agree or not? You can monitor how many resources it takes. You can monitor how much cost it is. You can monitor how much pain it is producing, a complaint it is creating, right? How many customers are going to suffer or serve, right? Process are having a lot of interesting things. The more you understand process, the better value you can produce. So our today's section is, our today's main topic is understand how we do as is analysis and how would you do to be analysis trust me this is one of the required skill good news it's a transferable skill means what you learn today you can apply most likely tomorrow's project sounds good so let me play a small video just for a case study see if you guys can tell me what is working and what is not working in this process okay this is one of the favorite uh, video we call Ch lucy chocolate factory so let's play this thing. What did you see in this? Is process is well defined? It's okay to say yes or no. No, it's no. time crunch. Time crunch. But why is time crunch? Because first of all, they, they use the machines competing with him. Mm -hmm. So if the machine is moving too fast, the this machine is moving too fast. Or maybe the employees are moving too slow, but like I can understand that I don't know how they're gonna uh -huh. uh, 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 build a machine. And okay. Like 15, first of all, you need the gloves, sanitary issue, right? And second of all, mm -hmm. um, maybe the employees are not like Okay. See, so again, you're doing bias. bias. You're providing solution without understanding problem, right? Well, so, problem so is, you need I to think that, your, Yeah, go ahead. I would say that input is more than what they can process. Is that a problem? Or is it something, it's kind of displayed like that? And they don't have a proper process to follow. Like, Why they don't have some process to follow? Like they could have put it in one place and then do it at their own. Okay, like very good. Sort of just grab so, so when you see something, there are n numbers of observations, right? Maybe they are slow, maybe they are not processes, not document. What else you see? What I see is that the, the manager never thought of this. It's because like they don't have it. Mm -hmm. So did manager provide enough or clear instruction? No. Answer is no, right? So when you see, remember one thing as a business analyst, this is one of the interesting problems. We are kind of problem solver. By default, our mind see the problem and then immediately solutions. Example, if I say my break is not working, what would you think? What would be the solution for that? Uh, call, call the mechanic. Right, call the mechanic, right? My break is not working. You immediately think about solution rather than questioning. Do you guys agree on that? So if I say my break is not working, if I say my break for the vacuum cleaner is not working, right? It might be different solution. Do you agree on that? Because without understanding a real problem, we might be able to 
provide solution, but that will not be effective. So here the problem is, first of all, who is setting the expectation? Let's go back. So the manager. So is manager is a problem? Is manager is the cause causing trouble? Yes, because she is not doing it. It's not necessary. These two people should have asked question. Yes or no? Did most of the time people will see it, but they will not say it. I like matra. In a matra, they say if you see something, say something. Right? Matra say that. But in a you know, most of the corporate America people will not say. Why? Because they feel it's not my role. Second thing, they will be afraid. If I say what my manager will feel awkward, what of others will feel awkward, right? And third, if I say something, they will ask me, ask me for a solution, right? And I may not be able to do solution, right? So there are many reasons people are afraid to share the real truth. Do you guys agree or not? And because of that, many people know it, but they don't say it. Yeah. So this is the reason company suffers. When company suffers, what will happen? People lose job, company lose brand, company lose values, company lose revenue. Yes or no? And that is the downturn happens. So downturn is not happening because of people are not working hard. People are working hard, but process are not defined. Do you guys agree or not? So long time back, long time back, almost like maybe 60, 70 years back, they initially, our friend, not friend, <laughs> The, the person called Francis Taylor. Francis Taylor, who was a very young, around 10th grade pass, and he was appointed as a, what do you call, easy language uh, supervisor for the railway, railway track. So railway track, when, when Francis was hired, Francis was like, kind of like lazy man. So he, he saw one interesting thing. Let me draw it so you can understand what I'm talking about. So this is what he, he thought. When I hire one person, one person, gigantic person can, in two hands, when they, you know, carry the load, they can carry easily 150 pound load. No problem with two hands. But then after a while, the same gigantic person, when try to lift the, you know, bar, steel bar for the track, they hardly lift 80 pounds. And this happens just in a, less than a one week or two weeks time. So he's surprised that this guy, when I hire, when I hire this guy, this guy was super duper motivated. He was able to lift single handed 150. But when I'm noticing after two weeks, he is just doing 80 pounds. Then he hired another person. And then he thought, he thought like together they're gonna do more, but he, they noticed together they do only 60 pounds. So he kind of surprised, this guy was capable to do 150 pound, other guy should have supposed to do 150 pound. So my expectation was they're supposed to do around 300 pound, but my productivity I'm getting is 60 pound. And this is the reality. Even in current, corporate America is like that. They hire one guy for productivity, but that guy doesn't do productivity, then they hire second guy, then third guy, then fourth guy. So what happened? Cost to serve. Cost to serve increase because you hire two people, so you end up paying more money. Do you guys agree or not? So money is going high, but the productivity is decreasing. Do you guys agree or not? So why is the productivity decrease? Because there is no incentive for them. So first is the motivation. No incentives, right? What? Very good. What are the reason? Uh, maybe they didn't, they, didn't, they didn't want to. The guy first worked hard because he knew he was in the trial period uh -huh. and now after he's been settled in he knows that it's going to be hard to fire this guy so uh -huh. he's just doing his bare minimum. So sometimes motivation, that's what you're still saying motivation, yes. Information is sharing. Information sharing. What about others on people on phone? What do you think? Why the one person can lift 150 pound after a while 80 pound and after a while two people collectively does only 60 pound? What could be the reason? Probably missing accountability. Accountability, so very good. They were becoming complacent and uh -huh. going lower and lower. Very good. Accountability. What else? The initial drop in the one person uh -huh. uh, from 150 to 80 could be just a like a physical thing. After two weeks of doing that kind of labor, there could be just a material like a burnout for burnout. the person. Yeah. So burning out. Yeah. Perfect. Nice. Um, maybe the other guy is. Uh, weaker, a lot weaker than the other guys. Okay. So that these are all valid valid points. So what 
Francis Taylor noticed, and this is very important for you all to know. Francis Taylor noticed that if this person individually performed, he is still able to do 150 pounds. But if I don't provide a clear path that he will you know, do more or better in coming weeks or month, then slowly, slowly his motivation disappears. Second thing, when he is doing the work, if surrounding people, if surrounding people are doing less work than him, then he will use them as a benchmark and he will reduce suddenly his productivity. So example, I'm hired for a company, I'm making 60,000 and how you are making 60,000. I was doing 12 hours and you are doing only 7 hours work. So I would say, why would I put, put 12 hours? You are doing 7 hours, same money. So suddenly I will automatically drop my productivity. Why? Because I think I am paid less for my productivity because you and me both are equal. So this is called social engineering. So most of the time process is losing its value because of social engineering. Those two ladies were there, right? If individually they could have done better. But collectively they were doing poor. Why? Because they talk, they gossip, they do Facebook, they talk about other things. Person will come late, person will do all. So there are a lot of things will happen. So Francis Taylor they made a minute. Individually he doesn't have a problem. But collectively he has a problem. So he used a couple of theories. He kept this guy in a separate room. I mean separate room in the sense of separate place where he cannot talk to other. Neither he can see other people. And he found very interesting thing. Productivity bounce. And it again go to 150 pounds. He kept it. And then he thought maybe what, what should I do so that it can generate more than 150 pounds. So he started giving some incentives. Now, he can, hey, if you do 170 pounds, I'll double your salary. And as he started giving them, people were able to live 200 pounds. So people had a capacity to do 200 pounds, but they were doing 150 pounds. As soon as we started giving incentive, people started producing 50 pounds more. So he started doing this thing, everyone separately. But just doing separately, everyone started doing 150 pounds. Productivity, you can do multiplication of productivity. Productivity can skyrocket. And this Francis Taylor, you can search in Google also, is known as a scientific, father of scientific management. Father of scientific management. And why we are talking about it? It's extremely important for you. Because you think process is not, process is not well defined, but there might be people who are not motivated. Or people are not, you know, people are doing social engineering and then they're dropping their expertise or their productivity. So Francis Taylor came up with the one concept and that is what McDonald used. So if you go to McDonald, have you visited McDonald recently? I, I worked in a McDonald's. You worked, right? So think about in McDonald's, the person who does burger, person who put cheese, person who does tomatoes. It's all separated. All separated. Do you agree or not? Yeah. That is Francis Taylor. Go to four. four just to give idea, in 1978 or 68, Ford was generating 1,000 cars. How many cars? 1,000 cars in a year. How much? 1,000 cars in a year. After Francis Taylor principle, can you guess how many cars Ford was producing? 1 million. From 1,000. From 1,000 to 1 million. What is that called? Productivity. Process improvement, productivity. Do you guys agree or not? Now ask yourself a question. If you were Francis Taylor and if you improve, you will also get a bonus, credit. Francis Taylor is known as the now father of scientific management. He has proven his theory over and over. McDonald is working exactly like that. Uh, you know, Ford is working because Ford and McDonald use his concept. Now, why we are talking about that? Because process is created by people. Speak with me. Process are created by, is created by people. If people are not motivated, if people are not understanding why they are doing what they are doing, then people will not produce process. Because let me just draw this diagram so you will understand. So when you start, listen carefully. When you start this thing, right? When you start this thing, some of your team member will be talented. And he will say, hey guys, let me show you how to do this step. One guy will say, yes or no? So one guy will say that and now other will follow. Other will follow. After a while, after a while, some of the guy might have a better idea and say, you know what? Let's do this thing this way. And we can improve. 
and then after a while people will follow that process yes or no then maybe someone else will come and say you know what we should be doing this process maybe a little differently let's do this and productivity will increase so what does that mean these people are continuously improving the process do you guys agree or not but most company what they do listen carefully most company what they do they specify process first by managers so manager comes and say this is what you need to do and then these people follow when people follow process where they did not involve neither they design neither they define then they will think if process doesn't work is a manager problem make sense or no they will think it's a manager problem because manager define wrong process and when manager is not a doer when manager is not a doer manager may not be accurate do you guys agree or not when manager is not a doer you cannot be accurate so what manager means you you all are manager what you should do is you should do brainstorming what you should do brainstorming. brainstorming hey guys what would be the process we should follow or what would be the right way to do you should enable them and define the first process when you define the first process it's as is right and and then you follow when you follow for a while and then you find improvement opportunity what are you going to find improvement opportunity something it's working and something is not working then again you do brainstorming and then say guys what can we do better and then you improvise it after a while follow that process and then again you do brainstorming guys what should we improve mind so if you do iterative and incremental your process will get better and better so if somebody say that my process is not working how would you address solution first you say hey did you analyze that why it's not working right it's a brainstorm means why why did it, why it is not working and as soon as you analyze what will happen you will you will find a solution people will come up with the options and that is your option recommendations if they come up with 10 options would you work on all 10 or one one that's called option selection do you need to come up with the option or your team will come up with the option and that's the bingo that's why business analysis role is extremely easy you do not need to have a solution you need to enable people to come up with the solution but that's charismatic skill you need to have and that is the reason you need to have people skill remember you don't need to be expert you just need to make sure people participate actively you motivate them so they engage with them if you can do it magic will happen most people think differently most people think i need to be expert in order to do a process and that's completely wrong because you are not a doer in order to be expert you need to be a like doer and there is no way you can do it so you need to bring people who are doing the work and then enable them so they come up with the process improvement questions so far so at work when a ba does as is analysis so mm-hmm. after that like as you said mm-hmm. uh to get everybody's input would he have to schedule a meeting with of course without meeting how people will so with the stakeholders or or with the the developers like team ask yourself question whoever can help you you should invite right think about them if whoever can help you so if you think like a, someone else outsider like example there is a book written in case if you like i like reading books i am book guy now it is i'm not able to read because i'm busy with videos and all but i like books the book is a book the old very old book i think i was a 20 years old book very important book the goal in case if you have not read i would strongly suggest you should read the book the goal the goal is it's all about process improvement it's one of the managerial book you might find from library or if you can go to half book store you will find in 1 dollar how much 1 dollar it's a romantic story by the way so if you like like romantic story when you start you will finish it in one side it's so interesting it doesn't look like a managerial book it looks like a love story when you start it look like a family life going on and within a real you won't even realize that you are learning the whole process the goal is about process improvement so for process improvement he doesn't have any idea his team doesn't have any idea you don't have any idea your team does not have any idea what are you going to do you going to branch outside to you bring external person yeah. you guys agree on mars why we bring consultant because we don't know anything right so we bring external person so you are allowed to do so it's always bring see internal view and external view and your company will pay for that 
So like a company like Accenture, company like, uh, you know, Capgemini, company like Deloitte, they come and they, they, they do observe and then they will provide you recommendation also. So you have to think about when should you do buy, buy in the sense of buy the service, when you should build it, when you should borrow. Borrow means have some other team member from other team also. So buy, build, borrow, you can do as well. Any other questions? So when, uh, when you are hired as a PA, mm -hmm. one of the first steps mm -hmm. in processing any improvement would do? Not one. Okay. Always you will do. Okay. Yeah, always you do improvement. Yeah. And improvement in a meetings, like example, as is meeting, sometimes most of the company will have one hour meeting, but hardly they will have 10 in stock. So 15 minutes is unnecessary. So you can come up with, hey, we are using one hour, but we hardly have a 30 minutes agenda. Why can't we do meeting 30 minutes? Suddenly you save 30 minutes time, eight people time. Yes or no? That's a process improvement. Every step you can improve. It, as it is as it is process mm -hmm. analysis is that it invites the people to tell them the process you you, you think it can work introduce it to them. yeah you should not tell them listen okay. carefully you should say guys what we currently do let's document it so when you document that's called as is and then you should question them hey how can we improve so example most of the time students ask come for consulting right they come to consulting so they come and say ask me hey can you help me here so like people who got recently job right our students they come here and they ask me suggestions what am i going to do i have no idea about their project yes or no so what am i going to do i'm going to ask question so when i'm there when i'm asking question they're telling me details i kind of you know kind of jot it down all those details and very soon i will be able to answer them so what did i do I found a process to find out the pain area where the problem is and then immediately I solve and the guy will say oh you're genius though they knew the problem they knew the solution what I just did I discovered it makes sense or not so you don't need to be expert remember as a business analyst you just need to ask questions yes yes Arjuna question okay go ahead okay so basically my question was that um, so in this Example, you you were saying that business analysis they solve a solution for the business, but I thought well, projects and what is project means to you? Project means that they are launching a new product or so service. product. Why why you are launching the new product? Because existing product is not doing good job. Yes sir. Then you need a new product, right? Same thing. As is current product, maybe iPhone twelve. To be product, maybe iPhone seventeen. Do you agree? Yeah. Same thing. But this is, a, this is for you for our company. So we're looking at other companies and seeing like what are they doing wrong that we can improve on. That's called benchmark. That's a different thing. That's a benchmark. Benchmarking means what others are doing good. Yeah. Process improvement means what steps we are doing, how we are doing. So let me just draw it so you can understand. This is a very interesting topic, as I said before. Like example, you're doing A activity. You're doing B activity. You're doing C activity and you are doing D activity and you are doing E activity. Now, from here to here, this is your input, this is your process, and this is your output. Make sense or not? Now, if some of the activity, we are just doing the sake of doing, because it's called non-value activity. Speak with me, non-value activity. Non-value activity means you are not even nothing. So like example, many of you, many of you, well, before the class, maybe you come here and maybe you are just, no surfing internet you're not doing anything okay. that's called non-value activity or maybe you're driving from house to here and you're not listening my videos maybe you are listening something else that's called non-value activity but when you're driving and if you're listening uh, your BA activity that's called value activity makes sense or not so non-value activity there might be some activity which if you can eliminate that process will be improved do you guys agree the second is called business value means it is not helping customer. It is not helping customer, but it helping business. So there may be some activity which has a business value. And there will be some activity which has a customer value. So some activity where customer gets value. So there are three types of activity. How many types of activity? Three, three types. Type so first is the customer value, which you should do more. Second is the business value, which you should do, but less. And non-value, you should not even do at all. So when you do as is analysis, 
when you do as is analysis the first thing you need to find out which activity i should eliminate right so non value activity you should immediately eliminate why because it's not helping anyone the second activity called business value somebody said document it and it is taking a five days you can negotiate can i do like bare minimum maybe a one day document and four days saving because it will help business say yeah we don't need all that's a comprehensive document so business value maybe you can minimize a little bit as long as it's still okay customer value you should do always best because at the end of the day customer gets value so our goal is to improve customer value our goal is to minimize the business value activity because those are just monitoring perspective auditing perspective we are doing so think about what essential you need to do and non value immediately uh, minimize it or uh, or remove it if you remove non value activity your productivity will improve your process will become more effective yes you know i heard that it's almost impossible to remove all of non uh, impossible value. you cannot fly from your house and here right yeah. there will be a time listen carefully this is very important topic you are bringing see many human many human they think about how oh, i cannot i cannot even remove this because i'm driving from home yeah. i'm driving from home to office so i have to spend 30 minutes while coming and 30 minutes while going so one hour loss happen but if you are smart you start your you know some kind of you know audio video and you can listen and that's what i do i as soon as i start car i listen my audio awesome. not movies or videos audio i have cassettes dvd cassettes which i listen so i have i go to library and i get those library dvds which i listen so my driving is a learning experience so what i did is i immediately replace non value activity with the business value or customer value activity if i continuously do that productivity will improve make sense or not whenever i go like example i fly a lot right when i fly normally what i need to go to airport i need to wait for the boarding pass right and then so overall waiting after security is almost 2 hours so first rule before i fly i buy two books one book i read before i go to the destination and second book while i'm coming back so any time i fly i read two books what did i do the non value activity i replaced with the value activity so that's the reason i'm able to read 80 or 80 books normally i don't get time but when i'm flying i don't get internet and i really want to use that time so that's why i read a book makes sense so you need to find how do you cut the non value activity and improve see many people say i got a job right i got a job listen carefully i got a job then my second question is is that a 100000 dollar job the guy said no but i got a job my need time to pay bills and so suddenly what you did you create a problem in your ecosystem listen carefully as soon as you got a job you are added activity in your day to day life yes or no if that activity takes a maximum time are you going to, are you going to do more value activity or less value activity yes, yes. of course so now your your total days as example you are working 12 hours out of that 8 hours you are working let's in walmart just an example so 8 hours walmart took it they give you 15 dollar per hour but then you have now limited hours maybe 4 hours maybe 1 hour so now for 100 hours value activity you only 4 hours and 15 dollar activity you are spending 8 hours do you see the problem and say yeah i don't get a job i don't get more improvement because you did a reverse if you are linking this class you should minimize that non value activity or less value activity and maximize the more value activity yeah. right give me an example another example i had my friends we all started at the same time and we invested invested in money we invested at same time so now let's just an example 10000 so people should oh they keep in a bank why money is safe in a bank but if you put in money in a bank what will happen it will give you little bit interest i put money in a you know mutual funds my after 7 years my money double another 7 double 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 but those people who put in a bank they hardly able to go got like and and inflation kill them so what i'm trying to say what activity you do productivity define on that make sense or not so that is the reason our human mind should work am i doing right activity or wrong activity see why am i teaching right now the reason i am teaching right now so you get better knowledge if you get better knowledge what will happen you will get a job and if you get a job what will happen your friends will see your success yeah. your friends will come here do you agree or not this is called compounded interest speak with me so i am not really helping you 
I'm helping your future growth, right? So you are my marketing agent. You are my marketing agent because once you get, I'm pretty positive you're gonna get a job. When you get a job, you will apply this knowledge. So wherever you're gonna go, that company will say, how did you learn all those things? So now suddenly it will come to me. Process is one of the most important factor as I mentioned. Every time when you do process, you make sure you communicate. Second thing, provide clarity. Because when you document the process, everyone knows what to do, when to do, how to do. Control the operations and you measure the outcome. Is the outcome is working or not. So most of the time when you go to bank or when you go to certain things, they will have certain process documented. Like example, mortgage, mortgage loan. How the process works, right? It documented so it's easy to share, easy to communicate, and you can easy to monitor or measure your success. So goal of the exercise, pictorially, you can process monitor. So let me show you some of my students who did amazing job. So we had like a seven, eight students who wanted to do some you know, additional work. So I asked them to come and document the process. So I'll show you some of the example. So what they did. So this is my website. Right, and I really want you to see that. And many students who did the work, they got a job also. Part of that, they always share that this is what they did. So this is like if I go here, and here, and let's say how to apply for YOR, right? So this is YOR program, and if you scroll down at the bottom, and you can see this is the process. Do you see that? Step one, like when YOR students come, they take attend attend orientation, which is called demo session, right? My CA or YOR students can take attend demo session. Then, then they like, they take a training. If they need a document, they can you know, prepare the document, then they go for career specialist, get approved, and then they get a voucher. And then they go through the exercise. Some of people will go for internship, and some of you go for staffing also. This is one of the process documented by PIRE. Right? I'll show you a couple of other process. We also have an uh, expert education foundation. So this Expert Education Foundation, we have a couple of process. This is a charity for, a charity form which we created with our students' help, our students, BA students, because most of the project which I work with the, our BA students. So why it is taking a little longer than I thought. What happened? It's down. It's coming. Okay, here we go. I was shocked in two minutes. So if you go here, there is a grant and scholarship process. So if you scroll down, do you see that process? So this is where students documented the process. Make sense or not? Now you can see how nicely the process is documented, right? And there are many more process you can document. So process doesn't need to be complex. If somebody say, fill out the form, do this, do this, do this, do this, this process is well documented. Right? So what I'm trying to say, when you do that, you're learning how to do process. And once you document, then you ask question about how long it takes from point A to point B. Who is doing this work? Uh, what's the delay? Right? Or what is the process required? All the things you ask, time, resource, money, other aspect, and then say, can we do better here? Can we do better here? And this is the way process improvement will happen. Each activity you can identify, say, where we are spending more time. If decision taking time, but how, why decision is taking time? Can we do decision like a little bit automated? Maybe can we speed up the process? Because in America, if you are going for mortgage loan, do you guys know how long it takes to complete the mortgage loan? Three months. Almost like a month, right? Around month time for mortgage loan, for approval. What does it mean? It means so far, most company don't even improve that uh, mortgage loan approval process. But there's a rocket loan. There's a rocket mortgage loan. They approve in a one day. One day. What they do? So whatever the manual process, they automated that. And rocket loans right now, almost $100 billion com million company. Why? Because they came up with the innovative idea. So the process used to take, process used to take like a month. Now they're doing in one day. Doable. Ask yourself a question. When, long time back, when you are shipping the product box, when you are shipping the box, please understand, from UPS or FedEx, it takes approximately five days, five to six days from point A to point B. Yes, sir. Amazon came up with the process that you buy it and we deliver in two days. Make sense or not? That was a very radical process. Suddenly, Amazon make billions of dollars. 
by process entry. Old, old fashioned, think about blockbuster or family video. You have to drive in a cold winter, go and get the DVD. DVD may not be there because if it is in demand, you come back with the uh, half hearted, right? You have to wait. And in case if you are delayed, they will charge you $4. This was the process. Now, Netflix came. You don't have to go outside. You can watch anytime, any movie. Suddenly, Netflix process worked out. Netflix are $100 billion company. Blockbuster and family video disappeared. What does that mean? Process improvement. Think about newspaper compared to news, online news, process improvement. So what I'm trying to say, the people who used to use Kodak, sound familiar? Yeah. Kodak or other like Nikon and all, iPhone came up with, hey, along with phone, I'll give you that. They are disappeared. One process is killing other process. To be honest with you, if you don't have a good process, you cannot survive in today's market. Um, basically, my question is that um, blockers try to then follow Netflix and try to do the mail thing, but it still didn't work. No, no, they didn't try. They didn't try. They were late. So when you are late, see, think about that. If somebody is winning the market, like example, Amazon or Apple, no matter you're going to do, you're not going to get that customer unless Amazon and, and uh, Apple screw up, right? Think about it. most people like water, like it's not water, Coca-Cola, right? So Coca-Cola has captured 137 country in the world. Pepsi, no matter jump up or down, they're not going to capture those customers. Why? Because unless Coca-Cola screw up something, the customer will not switch over. Once people like Coke, they will remain with the Coke. And when people like Pepsi, they will remain. There will be 5-10% people will switch and they don't find necessary Coke. But that's the reason company stay. If you like Nike, you will most likely wearing Nike. Do you guys agree or not? And certain people like brand oriented. And that is called process. You keep those customers on your hand. If you deliver good quality product, and the good quality product only comes through good process. If you work for Motorola, they call uh, process moto. Motorola follow process moto. That is their proud moment. If you go to Apple, they have their own process. Company follow good process to produce good quality. You are going to develop a process or you're going to improve the process. And if you do not know process, you cannot be successful. Is it true that now like process are changing even more faster than before? You can do it in every one hour. No one is stopping you. It depends on the dynamics, right? How companies or how people are accepting the reality. If if you all listen carefully, and I'll be very honest with you, if you change your process, you can change your outcome. If you can change your process, you can change your outcome. If you decide, and I'll be very honest with you, this is America. We call land of opportunity, right? If you decide tomorrow I want to be millionaire, you can be millionaire. This country provide all options. Problem is we don't know what process to follow. Why? Because we don't use our network. We have to use network. Network in the sense of four or five friends, have a cup of coffee, maybe Panera or Starbucks, and think about it. Think about what process we should do and then start following it. Let me tell you like story so you will understand why I'm telling you. Eight years back, eight or eight and a half years back, me and our team members, our partner, we were in a library, Schamburg library, and we were discussing like, you know, all educations, all education colleges are charging almost 100,000 for bachelor's and almost 80,000 for master. And they take four years or two years for degree. Can we come up with a training which works only in four months? Person get knowledge and then they get a job. And then that process developed. We did develop the process. We got approval from Illinois and other states. You can see how many states we got approval. The reason we got this many state approval because our process is so good. You can see these all states have approved because our process is good. You don't have to spend like hundreds of thousand dollars for college. You are going to get the similar job. If the person is getting hundred thousand dollar investment like college right traditional college so the process is so good now we are getting students from all over the states so you need to come up with the process i hope you are understanding what i'm trying to say because if you do activity activity doesn't have a weight you got to do process process means series of activity and series of activity connected together provide strong value chain strong value chain not one activity you may be good in communication but bad in a manage time management you are good in time management but bad in a communication maybe you are not in a presentation good make sure every activity you do is good then collectively the value chain will happen and that value chain will create improved process
question so far. So far, so good. Okay, so now we understand importance of process. I think we talk enough. So what will happen is initially you have to start defining the problem. What problem we are trying to solve? Then identify why we have a problem and what is holding us, right? Then do brainstorming. This is the critical part. When you do brainstorming, you have to think about SWAT. Think about SWAT. Every process you divide into SWAT, which is called strength and weakness. So current process, which is called as is, right? As is process. What is your strength, right? What is your strength? List out the strength. What is your weakness? And then find out which weakness is causing more trouble, right? Those weakness you can start work on that and improve. So that weakness will become your strength. Once you minimize the weakness and your strength increase, then you can think about what opportunity you're going to target. So S W S means strength, W means weakness, O means opportunity. So all your strengths should leverage opportunity. You need to leverage opportunity because threat is not your control. Threat is not in your control because these are external. Opportunity and, ex and threat are external and strength and weakness are internal. So strength and weakness are internal means you have full control to improve your weakness. You can minimize the weakness and improve your strength. This is the area companies are working. So when company come up with the word called strategy, if you read carefully, the strategy is nothing but maximize the strength and minimize your weakness to, to maximize your opportunity. So whenever somebody says that, hey, we have strategy, they use only three things. How can we maximize our strength, minimize our weakness, and maximize our opportunity? That's what the strategy is. And when you need to implement the strategy, you come up with the process. Make sense? So during brainstorming, you need to do SWOT analysis. And once you define some suggestions, you pick one suggestion. Pick one suggestion and then do prototype. Prototype means start at the smaller scale. Maybe one group, maybe one division, and then you learn from them and then go to other divisions. Then go learn from them and go for other divisions and learn from them and go for other divisions. But don't try to do big scale. If you do big scale, you will fail miserably. Start small and then improve. Then go for bigger, then improve. So it's an iterative and incremental approach you need to do. Once you do that, then you can iterate that thing. And this is the way process improvement happens. Questions. Questions with the process improvement. They may ask in interview, how did you do that? So you got to have one example for your in your for your project perspective because they may ask you one example. And then they will ask you what challenge you have. Like they will ask you what are the key stakeholders you have. Started what was the problem initially, and when you implement what was the outcome, what kind of improvement you did, what value you deliver, right? What are the options you use? What are the technology you use? What are the techniques you use? How long it took? How much money you took? They will ask you tons of questions. So your whole interview will be just like this slide. Is a testing session where the beta uh, beta software is tested? This is not a software, but your pilot project. It's called pilot. Yeah. So right? is it like a beta style or pilot project where select like customers? Like yes. 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 Like, yeah. So you start with a small, and then you can move forward. Right? Now moving along. Every process will go through this way, as is to to be. As is to to be means where you are and where you, you want to go. And this area is called gap. You got to understand the gap. If gap is big, it will take long time. If gap is less, it will take less time. Your goal is to identify is do, is, do we really have a big gap, right? So example, if I start e-commerce and if I want to be like an Amazon, it's a huge gap. Do you guys agree or not? But let's say I start some product and other companies are pretty close and gap is pretty tiny, then I might be able to reach them in six months or nine months. Make sense? So your role when you are joining as a BA, first role will be to understand as is. You need to document it. Then define the future. Then define the gap. Where is the gap? And how long will it take to do this navigation? This is called digital transformation or we call business transformation or we call change so you need to bring organizations in this journey and your role is to make sure you lead change without change nothing will happen you have to lead organizations from 
as is to to be and that is the leadership you need to provide as a business analyst is amazing opportunity you have because when you are transforming from current state to the next step it's a profound responsibility you will have a enjoy you will enjoy because it, trust me your time will fly and every day you will feel good because you are learning new thing you are making a positive impact in organizations make sense this gap analysis is key you got to have a some kind of way to identify how big this gap is okay now we talk about it and you have to go through the series of change so you can say phase 1 will do this phase 2 will do this phase 3 will do that so you as a ba to come up with the plan that right? first stage will do this much the second phase will do this thing and the third stage will do this this is called phase approach or we call road map so you define timeline what would be the first stage what would be the second stage that's why as a ba you got to be a visionary you got to be a project manager you got to be a communicator because at the end of the day you are going through series of steps you cannot jump from current stage to the next step in a one second or one day it takes sometimes days months and years question so far good yeah so you will get some kind of project tonight about this kind of thing i want you to understand the current process i want you to come up with the steps how you going to navigate from current steps to next step and you will do some kind of what you call muscle building exercise i know many of you are doing homework and i'm expecting you guys will do good job in the homework i'll show you the homework will be homework is due but it's individual we are not going to do project as a team individually because i know many students do not participate in a project so we want to give individual opportunities so everyone can work on that because if i give a group project people are having a free ride right many people don't participate yes. right many people are free ride so because of those people other people are suffering so we want to give everyone opportunity they do them themselves the project again we will not do presentations we want you to complete the project best project which i receive i will share with the group so at least you will understand how people have documented this process makes sense i have a step by step guideline how to do the project work which i will show you around 9 o'clock mm -hmm. so my question was uh, about the manager change that's why like, most many companies hire consultants to do like change right like they, they not necessary the employees and like, yeah not necessary they can hire at any time it's not like any time they can hire right it can be a start when they are bringing the first process they might hire you yeah. or they are transforming the process they might hire you right okay as a ba do you work on existing projects like both the project already started and both. You're still like, okay. it depends some of the project may be new some of the project may be existing yeah so whenever you do project think about that are you reducing manual task right are you reducing error are you allowing customer satisfaction do you reduce compliance cost did you reduce time if your project is not delivering value or process is not delivering value don't even do it if there is no benefit which you call roi return on investment don't do it just don't do it see many students i always tell people when you do the project you are investing three things right first you are investing time right second you are investing money right and then third you are investing resources there is no reason you should you know delay this thing maximize this four months so when you come out your roi will be super duper people will really see wow that factor you will provide which is called impressive out outcome but in four months if you don't do put effort if you don't do homework if you don't do lab your you roi succeed. your roi will suffer and you will only see people successful and you will always have a, like you know regret that you did not do transformation if you cannot transform yourself you cannot transform business so leadership is all about leading first yourself and then you transform the organization so you need to have that type of muscle building exercise that you take the resource time and money and then give time and then transform because you need to show what value you deliver to the organizations extremely important because at the end of the day people will ask you what is your roi return on investment right and you should do calculations also now we are going to do a lab after break but the first thing i want to make sure you understand is called bpm business process uh, modeling notation so business process modeling the notation means symbol so there are few symbols we need to understand the first symbol is called event this is called event 
this is the event this is called start and this is called stop event so the first is the start and stop every process will have a start and stop the second is called action or activity so this is called action or activity so some process will have action or activity means someone is doing that someone is doing that so like it can be customer it can be manager it can be employee it can be staff member someone is doing some actions or uh, activity and then there will be a symbol like a diamond there will be a symbol like a diamond this is called gateway gateway means you are doing merging you are doing merging diamond type of symbol means two activity comes together so you are kind of merging and then you are making a decisions and then you are deciding to the next step so when you have multiple activity when you have multiple activity coming together when you have multiple activity coming together which we call gateway so this this symbol it's called gateway gateway symbol allows you to make a decisions go this way yes or you can go to this way it allows you decision so when you have multiple activity coming together as an input right multiple activity coming together as an input right this is the input and from there you make a decisions and when you make a decision which side you want to go to yes side or no side so that's a gateway event is like start and end and then activity make sense so bpmn has a very simple thing after break we're going to cover all men the process using using bpm and whenever i said bpm it's called business process model the reason we are modeling with the symbol so we need to have first symbol right symbols second activity and third is the flow with gateway right so as long as you have that then it will make sense after you do that you will start analyzing when you analyze that you are now doing value analysis you are doing process analysis and you are doing other kind of you know we call gap analysis so these are the word people use often so that's what we want to make sure you understand so whenever you are in interview these words will be oftenly discussed they are kind of intertwined so it's not like one versus other but it's the same concept which you are learning right now so we are going to do exercise called document the process and then we'll discuss about how to improve the process in order for us to document the process i will go in our uh, what do you call powerpoint there is a last thing i was step here let's start with here first let's see how much you understand so if i give you opportunity i am in healthcare happy hospital and i'm going to give you a number here each activity has a number right like this way activity has a number tell me which one which activity would you do first which activity you do second which activity you do later i think the first i'll try to book an appointment okay everyone everyone is agree with that where is that option book an appointment i don't see that option so it mean maybe new activity then right it's a new activity book appointment let's assume just for a thing well mm -hmm. walk-in could you speak up a little loud uh, sorry i'm not able to hear you if it's a walk-in then it's number four wait in line wait in line very good that's based on that it says like okay that's one i know if it's a walk-in then i would prefer number to pay now this is for, pay for the bill that you pay we can do later right uh, wait in the line there are two times wait in the line so do you think just duplicate or maybe there might be a wait first before the doctor right and then maybe wait up for the first or for admit in line for the lab i think yeah, la go, go line or lab. lab sorry my mistake go to the lab i think after that it will be wait in the line okay maybe there's a line there. so where where should i go after one the line mm -hmm. that's doctor it. 5 Number five, meet the doctor. Are we still on the, we still on the first? Where are we? Hello, people on phone, you need to mute yourself. Sorry. So wait in line, meet the doctor, go okay. to the lab. Where is the doctor? Where is the doctor? Five. Five, okay. 
go to the lab, uh -huh. give them sample. Give them sample, which one of the sample? One? Yeah, this one. Eight. Uh -huh. Pay for the test. Pay for the test, which is? Get the results. Is choose the department number one. Choose the department. Oh yeah, that's number one, yes. Okay, so I'll do, let's say zero for now, okay. Mm -hmm. So number five is gonna be pay for the test. Mm -hmm. Pay for the test, where is the, the people? Item seven, seven. seven. Oh yeah, here you go. And get the okay. results, number nine will be five. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. meet the doctor again, 11. And 12. 12. Mm -hmm. And then pay for the visit, mm -hmm. number two. And then go get the medicine, number 14. Oh. Okay, okay for the medicine. medicine. So you you can see here. No no, this is fine. We are, we can we can start with this, right? And then we can say what's working or not. So like example, let's say tomorrow, just an example. Tomorrow, and this is very honest thing. Tomorrow, you can go to hospital and say, hey, I want to do internship for you. And I want to optimize your process, right? Just you're spending one day or two days, I can give you a guarantee you will improve improve office, sorry, hospital for, uh, proficiency or efficiency by 5%. What does it mean? 5% means if they are spending, let's say, spending, let's say, $100, suddenly you save $5 for maybe hour or maybe for, for a week patient. Now, suddenly, or in a day, you are saving hundreds of dollars by multiplying by 365 you will save thousands of dollars. Do you guys agree or not? So process improvement does help. I want to make sure you understand. So there's a system. First, you understand manual activity. Then you reorganize the activity. You reorganize the activity the way you want and try to find the simplification. So for creative thinking, remember, the day you feel, and I always tell people, the day you feel that you are not productive, or not, you're, you're not generating high ROI, you need to retrospect yourself. What you are doing, where you're spending, what activities you are doing, which is you can stop it, other activity can be stuck. So it's all creative thinking. Person to person, it will vary, okay? So yeah. in the interview, they they do ask a lot of questions on BPMN and all mm -hmm. of those, mm -hmm. right? So mm -hmm. do, do they give the pen and paper to draw or like this? Or they can give you whiteboard, or they will ask you to pay, you can, they will give you something. They will ask you paper or whiteboard, Mostly that's why it works. But they don't give you this, like this. You can, you can, you can say I can do in computer. You can ask if you want to, because you can say I will, I can be more effective by so word that I Sorry? What do you I don't think they prefer. They ask you, your comfort zone. I personally see, if I can do draw dot IO, I can do in whiteboard also, right? Yes or no? It's not like a one versus other, I will lose the skill. I would prefer whiteboard because I can easily erase, I can you know, interact. Because dot dot I need a computer, I need a projector, I need all those things. I would not add additional overhead, right, in the interview. But if there is opportunity, why not? Okay. So there to draw dot I and press enter. And when you press enter, you might notice that we use this software often because this is your best friend. And when you are here, click on create new diagram. And when you click on create new diagram, you will get this options, right? So right now, we're going to click on the blank diagram. And when you are doing that, you can see here, there are so many diagrams we have here. We will come up with the BPM in a few seconds. But right now, we're going to take blank diagram and we'll say create. We're going to click on create. It will ask me to draw. So we'll say back. Blank, 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 sorry. Did we use group folder? Doesn't matter. It's up to you. So download. I normally use download folder. Download folder and bank. Now click on save. So where you are saving, just need to know about it. And then save it. I already have files, so I'm gonna hold it. Let me know if you all are here. People on phone, give me thumbs up if you are all here. It's okay to give a thumbs up. So at least I know. Okay, one, two, three. Perfect. Thank you so much, Mike and Charmy. Awesome.
Now, before you go further, I want to make sure you scroll all the way down, this one, all the way down, and see if you have BPMI. So if you scroll all the way down, see, I have it. You may or may not have it. You may or may not have it. Okay? So if you don't have it, don't cry. That's okay. If you don't have it, you may have a symbol called more ships. Right? If you don't have it, then you click on more ships. Click on more ships. Please click on more ships. And when you click on more ships, you get the symbols. And if you scroll down here, you will see business. If you scroll down, you will see BPM. Do you see that? Under business, there is a BPM. Check, check, check. Check that. So when you click on check, and then when you apply that, then it will show up here. Then you will see all the symbols. So if you are able to see that now, happy, happy, right? Couple of things. There are a lot more things you can do in BPM. And I would not go crazy because if you go, you can spend life because there are so many symbols. Goal of the exercise, listen carefully. Goal of the exercise, you have audience, your stakeholder, your team members, your yes not. You are using this tool to communicate them. Make sense or not? So it's simple and easy way if you can communicate that's great you don't have to spend too much time if it is going to take like two three hours great but if it's going to take two three months or weeks or days then you are doing too much time right so it's important so now if you click on this tiny arrow you can see some symbols will be visible like that so you can see certain symbols will be visible and i'm going to show you some symbols so you can see here so first of all when i do bpmn i see symbol land so you can see this is the symbol land and this is the symbol for pool. These are very powerful, which you will be using it. So land or pool. You can create land and pool. So that's one thing. So if I drag this guy here, check it out. If I drag here and if I drag another land here and if I connect that, you will see like they will be connected. Move your mouse and you can connect here like that. Let me repeat. In case if you want to delete, just select it and press delete. So you can delete. So let me repeat. I have this land, I'm going to drag and drop here. So I'm going to drag and drop and I'm going to drag and drop land here. And when I bring closer, it's going to be connecting like that. Make sense? Connecting like that. Any questions so far? So far, so good. So whenever you have like land, you can do that. So normally what I do is, I first don't go through land. I try to do without land. And then with land, I can do that as well. So let me do first without land so you can be comfortable and then we can do further. But we'll come back after a few minutes with the swim land. Now go all the way up. Go all the way up where you see general symbol. So take your scroll bar all the way up and you will see general symbol. Make sense? Now in general symbol, you can use this circle. If you drag and drop, this is the first symbol, which is the, your event, which you can write start. You can write start. So you can write start. Yeah. Right? Here start. Make sure you always see on the screen because the last thing you can do is not follow, right? So it's an important, important thing you can follow. I draw, I do zoom, zoom. I would do all my part, but you need to do at least your basic part one, right? If you don't do it, you will not learn it. Simple, easy thing, right? Now start is there now move your mouse and if you move your mouse you get an arrow and you get a four options so you're going to select the rectangle option like this one so let me repeat if you move your mouse you get an arrow and you're going to click on the rectangle rectangle blocks and you just click it automatically it will connect so let me repeat again you move your mouse you get a rectangle block and you can click on that so it automatically connects let me one more time you move your mouse you get a rectangle and then you click on that and it will connect. Now here, I'm thinking about a mortgage application. So this is a customer, so customer fill up the application. Fill up the application. Relax and enjoy. Make sure you do it. When you do it, you will learn it. Trust me, there's nothing hard. It's all about doing the activity. So fill up the application. <clears throat> so when you fill up the application, then what, you, what are you gonna do next? Submit. Submit. So you move your mouse and you will get another rectangle block. See here? 
move your mouse and you get another rectangle block. Move your mouse, rectangle block, and here you can connect that. So let me repeat here. Move your mouse, rectangle block, and here we're going to say submit application. So when you submit the application, what happened? This application is now going to bank. If you want to move it around and do a little bit adjustment, you can. So you can do some adjustment so you can have better space alignment. Because sometimes box might be big, so you can do click it and you can do some management also. Now, this is what normally customer will do. Normally, customer will do. Now, once submit the application, now the application will go to bank. Right? So, bank most likely clerk, clerk will be accepting that application. And now, they, what they're going to do is, they're going to first thing they're going to say, they're going to say, is application is complete. Right? So, you move your mouse, you move your mouse, and you can see four options you have. From there, you select the diamond. And you can say, is complete. Why? Because if your application is complete. So you always diamond normally normally will have questions. Yeah. So my question is, how do you choose these different shapes? Like why did you choose That's what I've been explaining for a while. Right? Yeah, I know. Mm -hmm. Ask yourself question. I explained four simple before the break. Yes. What are those four simple? So the diamonds notes. What is the diamond means? What do we call? Before the break. Who will help? Gateway. It's a gateway where you have two inputs and one output, or one output and two inputs. It's like where you make a decision. 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 Okay. Where you make a decision, right? Before the break, I played video also, right? Remember, yes or no? Right? Everything I explained, right? Right now, we are using it. Now, if we go reverse, it will be losing time, right? So that's why full attention is important, right? Now, is incomplete, complete or incomplete, right? So let's say if it is incomplete. So it goes back to the. So what are you going to do? If it is incomplete, then you will take this arrow and hold your mouse left button. Hold your mouse left button and connect to this block. And right here, not. No. Just say no. So basically, if it is not complete, then you're going to send them back. Make sense? So let me repeat. Sometimes people have a hard time. Let me show you. You move your mouse, you get a blue arrow. Hold your mouse left button. And then draw it. Hold your mouse left button and draw it. And then you do it and it will do a nice L shape. If it is safe, it's not coming, don't cry. You, I will show you how to bring the shape properly. But always, 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 when you are learning, make sure you pay put a full attention so you can do it. Because if you are multitasking, you will have that same question, right? Right? And that shows the entire, entire story, right? We don't want to be like that, right? A whole beating complete and say, what did we discuss? <laughs> right? Okay. Now, let's say if it is complete, what should we do next? If it is complete, the application submitted was completed. So, what, what should we do next? Process. In that case, we're going to review the application. So, we'll use activity. So, we're going to use this thing. Please understand. We're going to use this and then we'll do rectangle and say review application. Is activity with rounded corners or it doesn't make it? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. So now your review application. Now when you review applications, you may have a couple of things like maybe good credit or bad credit, right? So if you go here, now I have a decision. So now when you re review applications, you are another application you are doing is check credit, right? So I'm going to use this rectangle block, right? So I'm going moving your arrow and rectangle block and also check credit. Part of the application, I'll do check credit. Now it's natural that I will check, is it good or bad? So now I'm going to use arrow and then diamond. Make sense or not? Arrow and then diamond is good. Is good. What is good? Credit. If credit is good, what are you going to do? You're going to approve it. Right? If your credit is good, you may want to approve them. Right? You may, you may want to approve them. So in that case, you're going to use this arrow. Right? You're going to use this arrow. And you're going to say, I'm closing. So here, approve. But approval, you're going to send approval. Right? So let's send. I will use an activity here. So that way, it will be easier. So I'm going to use like this activity. Please send me. Check it here. I'll send. 
approve application so that's the part when the is credit good so this arrow this arrow is showing yes so double click on the arrow double click on the arrow double click on the arrow and just start typing yes right so if if it's good credit you double click on the arrow and start typing yes but if it is not good then you will say decline so in that case you will also have you will also have a rectangle block and you're going to say decline application right so you are declining right now both cases after you do that is there any additional step required after you approve or decline do you think any additional step required what are we doing we are getting mortgage yeah so you are you are doing mortgage approve so either you can approve or you get decline is there anything else required um is it so basically you are done right this is the last step so you move here and then connect to the event and here you're going to say end you're going to say end even after decline application it should be the end right? yeah both side it, it will go end right so you can move your mouse check it out you move your mouse and you can do end like that so either way you're going to end so your applications ends as soon as you de approve or decline so here in this arrow I'll say no. No means this credit was not good. Basically, that's the reason you have said no here. No means your credit was not good. In that case, you get declined. So you can see how I have created a nice flow in a few minutes. Again, this is my starting point. When you do first time any process, it won't be the best process in the world. Okay. But the goal of the exercise, you start what you know and then start discussing with your stakeholder. When you start discussing with stakeholder, they will give you some hint. They will say, you know, we do this thing, you need this thing, and your process will get you know better and better. Any questions so far? So we don't need BPM and tools to you, we can just make it like that. This is like a simple flow. Simple. I'm gonna show you. This is the you, this is the activity, this is the activity flow basically. You can use this, nothing wrong in that. You are still using BPM kind of symbol, event, activity, gateway, so you are fine. You don't have to use BPM, but if you use BPM symbol, it's more impressive, right? I'll show you in a few minutes. Yes, sir. application is complete. It's where I did not for maybe to move the cursor. So what is the question? I just repeat for the process of how I can move the cursor forward. It is complete to yeah, you yeah, just when the arrow shows up blue hold your mouse button and then draw draw you need to draw yourself okay hold your mouse left button have external mouse so you can hold it you can press like that and you have to draw it you have to have blue arrow hold your mouse left button and then you draw it yeah you need to draw it it would be easier if you have external mouse hey, oh, okay. yes uh, uh, as working as a BA, I see that they generally ask uh, either draw.io or, or VZO. Mm -hmm. Is draw.io good enough that most of the tasks we can do? We will have to learn VZO as well. VZO now no one uses. No one uses VZO because VZO is a desktop application and most people use cloud. So draw.io is very, very popular. Very popular because it's a free and you don't have to pay. VZO they charge $400 per desktop license. And majority company will not pay four hundred dollar, so that's why you need to use free. So Visio is one of sorry Draw.io, LucyChart, Smart Draw. They all are like all cloud-based software. So if you know Draw.io, you know almost all software. Um, I'm just kind of surprised Thanks. that a mm -hmm. stakeholder would not consider this like that's all you did. Like they consider this like good information. So like um like this is. A, this is simple, but trust me, they might not even know how to do it, right? Now, the first thing you do is document the current process. This is the as is. We are not done yet. We are not done yet. If you pay attention, anything what you know about your document, it doesn't mean this is complete, right? Now, I'm going to ask you a question.
Okay, so By external mouse, this is very easy. Otherwise, ask Harish, he will give you a gift too. Because this will really speed up the process. Because you all, all are using fingerprint, this is not going to work. In a real life, people will see that the speed will be matter. Because remember, you're doing product <laughs> process improvement. You need a 100% speed. They will see your movement also, right? They will help you. Okay. Now, once you document it, the first thing they will you need to ask as a BJ. No, I will ask you. How long it takes from here to here? Normally in bank, how long it takes? One month. One month, right? So now what would be the question? What what question would you ask to stakeholder? Now they are in a meeting. You kind of got their input. These are the key activity they do. Makes sense or not? For mortgage. Now they are saying overall it takes one month. Now what would be your question for them? <laughs> If you ask can how, I, then they will not hire you. <laughs> I would say, can anything be automated or eliminated from no, this? No. If if you ask that type of question, then then they know the solution, right? You need to ask something interesting. Is right? there a way we could ask the breakdown of the timing just so it gives you yes. some so, idea? Yes, so that is the right question. You cannot ask them, what should I eliminate, right? <laughs> if, if, you, if they know it, they will not hire you, right? So your valuable question will be, Okay, who does fill up the application? Listen carefully. See guys, it looks simple, but it's profound. Fill up the application, who fill up the application? Uh, the, the customer. Then question is, how do they fill up the application? They go online, they fill an application. So now, would be a good idea to write some notes here. The customer fill up the application. Like online. pre-process or okay. something. Okay, no, 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 let's go through that. So I'm going to use a comment. Do you see this here, small text? But if you go down in the BPM, there should be a note somewhere. So we can use notes. Uh, this one. You can see that, this one. Yeah. So I can use this one or, or there are many more. I think well, yeah. So yeah. we can use annotations and I can write here. Check it out. Make sure you understand. Remember, creativity is everything. And all your creativity start with your questions and quality of questions will drive success. So if I take annotation, now you document that here you start writing. So you can say uh, customer, customer, fill up online, right? So you took a note that customer fill up online. So now ask your question. If customer fill up the application, listen carefully. Do you think 100 and 100% Customers will fill up the application correctly. No. So now why they don't fill up correctly? Humans make mistakes. Human make mistakes. If they need help, how would they get help? Um, we can do uh, avoid the chat support. Mm -hmm. support. Okay. So, so could you support the chat? What? Would you support the chat or not? Would you recommend, right? Yeah, yes, sir. Right. Why? Because chat is cheaper, technically speaking, because the person can be in a different country. Yes or no? Yeah. And can help, right? We so, could also look at the application and see if we could make it more elaborate and sell. Like coming, we are coming. So, first of all, application the mistake. So, we can write, I'm going to write here. I'm oh, sorry for that. I need to put it again. Let me back it here. So, I'm writing customer fill up online, right? Customer fill up online. Mm -hmm. So, suggestion we can say chat support. So, need need chat support so that's one now question is let's say some of you are some of the customers are not technically shaving they don't have computer cannot can they not complete the mortgage application well if they have chat support and chat support can ask yourself question they're not technically shaving how can they even talk to chat support they can call they can call, call. customer so service now, now we need to have now we need to have a customer service right need phone customer service in person in person or online do you guys agree or not because in person means like example if somebody says i don't have a computer i want to still apply for mortgage in this flow you are not considering person who can walk in 
right? But now you need a support. So basically, what you just did right away, improvement. Say. What about, you know, if you are not, have, if customer does not have a computer, you don't provide mortgage, rocket mortgage may not provide. Because rocket mortgage assume, listen carefully, rocket mortgage assume that you have online knowledge. COVID vaccine assume your cell phone because everything on COVID was phone. Do you guys agree or not? Or email. And that was it's a big problem because the people who did not have a computer, who did not have knowledge, they would not, they would not be able to do the COVID application. So that was a we call weakness. So you define that. So now when you define customer service, what they will do? They will provide you that customer. So then you need a they can customer can walk in there and then they will fill up the application, right? And then they will submit behalf of customer. Oh. So far, so good. That will save time on like reviewing your application. Now the question come here. How long it takes, how long it takes to complete the application? No, no, no. The, uh, filling the filling application. Oh. One hour, right? That's yeah. So question is why one hour then? They have to put the social security number that they have right. right? So so now listen carefully. So fill up the application, take let's say one hour, then you can say what are the sections you are asking, right? Example, some of the ex sec sections you may be able to pull by based on the SSN or based on the driver license. So you don't have to really ask too much information, so you can pre-populate. So I like some of the application, as soon as I enter my email address and all, it does pull up certain informations, right? Listen carefully. Mortgage application is such a beautiful part. However, it's worse, why? Right? Because bank, let's say example, your application, so your account in the Bank of America, you have account, that's the reason you are going for loan. They will not give you loan if you don't have an account, right? So technically speaking, they do have all your information, yes or no? So if you ask, hey, why it is taking one hour? Again, they are asking first name, last name, email, and phone. Can they not ask your account information and pre-populate it? If they do, will it reduce from one hour to maybe 10 minutes? Yeah. Maybe yeah. yes or no, right? Yes. Suddenly you did a process improvement. Think about you are getting three, 100 applications. So suddenly you are saving a lot of time. Do you guys agree or no? And when you are pre-populating information, does it improve your quality or decrease your quality? Uh, improve. improve your quality, right? So you can say that, you can just add here and add key here. Pre-populate, pre-populate customer information, right? Pre-populate, right? Because based on your account detail, you can pre-populate, right? So let's say populate. What if the customer doesn't have an account? One second, populate uh, customer information. In that case, they have to create first account, right? That's another opportunity. You're helping with back, right? Because this guy was saying, I cannot fill up the application because he was going online, he was getting error. But here your opportunity, hey, you create a first account and then apply. So now you're helping this bank to get a new customers. So if you are going for a credit card, bank will ask, why don't you open an account and then you apply for credit card, right? So that way they can have all the details. So you can have a you know, flow, you can ask for new accounts. So you can market also new account, some promotion offer you can market, right? So ask for new account, very good. Now, you're kind of seeing here now, you suddenly started working in this step and helping business. Now, they submit the application and it's going here. When you go here, is complete? I'll say answer is no. So let's say answer is no. So question is how many application is not completed? What percentage applications are rejected? Let's say, you're getting 40% applications are rejected. What are you gonna do now? No, no, this is not that good. So when we optimize incomplete. the process, this 40% will be substantially reduced. That will be reduced, but still it's somehow you're rejecting. So, so then we will look at the reasons. Correct. So you can so say rather than we reject it, can we put it here so they cannot even submit it and validation happen here? So then they know what the problem is. So we get application faster because if we reject it, technically we are not doing anything. Yeah. Let's say we got 100 applications. Out of 100, we only got, let's say, 60 successful. It means we are only working for 60 and 40 we reject. 
When we reject, doesn't mean those forty people will submit again. It means we lost the customer. Do you guys agree or not? So what we can suggest here, what you are validating here, can you tell me the steps so we can add here? Make sense, sir? So now we can add an annotation here, right? We can add an annotation here. We can say add validation step and inform customer to correct. So you can you can validate like example address is incomplete, email is incomplete, phone is incomplete. So you can ask customer to validate and correct it. So when they send here, we should get all hundred out of hundred, or maybe ninety plus here than this side. If we do that, did we improve the process? Yes or no? Um, so basically, what I was saying that uh, if they leave it incomplete, they probably put the email address. They will probably lose the email address to the site. Hey, your, your app is Correct. So now you can say your very good point. So now you can add another reminder here. Send couple of reminder, right? Send multiple reminder. Send multiple reminder to complete the application, right? Sometimes when you do partial application, people will keep sending you. So yeah, you can send uh, notes here that hey, we should not just only send one time. Rejection, but we can send email reminder here. Application is rejected because of so and so reason. We can complete that application. Make sense or not? Now, if you are going for here review applications, what questions we can ask here? Um, that means we got their um, their mobile mm -hmm. uh, application, right? So mm -hmm. they check their income, the credit mm -hmm. score, mm -hmm. and everything. Correct. So, Automate the process. So you can ask question: Is it a human, or is it a automation? Right. And, uh, automation can do it to check the bank's minimum credit score, and then yeah. So you you can partner with maybe experience, or maybe you can partner with some other uh, some other credit card company or credit score company, and say, hey, if I send you the customer detail, can you give me right away? Most people do FICO score, right? FICO score, right? If you want to check FICO score, it doesn't even take time nowadays, right? You fill up the information, press the button, no, like okay. right away TransUnion and others will give you right away. Yes or no? So if you create automation here, then your check credit may take like a few seconds. Do you agree? And review applications, you can provide, create in a two things, right? If majority is correct, you can get it through here. And those who are incorrect, you can have manual process involved, right? So maybe you can add a note here, right? If the application has good complete, you can add automation aspect or some manual, right? So you can add a manual, manual and automation step here. Automatic, automated steps here. Means something you can do manual, something you can do automation. So let me just move this guy here a little bit so you can read better, right? And this guy is. Mm -hmm. So like what I think is that if the room, if the automation step approves it, then we mm -hmm. just send say to the customer that it's approved. Mm -hmm. And if the uh, automation uh, rejects the application, then a manual person will check it to make sure that the, mm -hmm. the robot didn't get it right. So so you can it can have like decline applications. You can have another step here to review one more time, and then you reject right, right. So the second review. Maybe you can have that. So you can say second manual audit basically. Yeah. Right, audit rather than sending to customer and then straight bypass that thing and then you can bypass it. So from here, you can I can move my mouse here, check it out. I can move my mouse from here. Let me show you here. So here I can do this thing straight end. If my manual audit fails, right? Yeah, like that, I can straight go to end state. So let me make it this way so it is better. Let me show you this way. So if something is rejected automatic, then I can add a one more step, which is called manual, right? This makes so that we get the maximum customers as possible. Like that. So basically what I'm trying to do here is I'm adding another step here. So check it out. What he's saying, if application decline, I'll do manual review. And if manual review is not good, then I'll go through that. Do we need to remove the connection between decline application and end now? 
some applications, if we are going to do manual, then your answer is yes. That is the improvement. And I don't think we need then this line, right? In that case, we manually check the credit, basically. Until yeah. we go in that same loop yeah. until it's approved, right? Correct. Correct. I think we need a, this decline, right? We need a decline because otherwise it will go in finite loop, right? Don't we need the decision box there? Because No, no. Here, see here. You, sorry. Here is a good. No, you came here and now you check the credit, right? Now, from here, again, you got a new, then you will go back. Like this way, right? Decline application should be in a diamond, right? Because it's going yes and no. No, no. Both uh, here, decline applications, we are going for all decline application. All decline applications will go through review, right? Mm -hmm. But if it is second time you come, if second time it comes, so we can add here, it's a second time process. Then you can reject it, right? First time it, it should go here, right? So we can add like this thing. I think you are bringing good point. Let me do one thing here. I add one more diamond. Right? And you can say, is it a second time basically? Right? So it's a second time. Second time. Then if it's a second time, then I'll I'll just end it. Make sense or no? This one will end. First time it has to go through. First time it has to go to decline process, review process, right? But if it's a second time. Let me do this way. One second. I, let me do this way. First, I'll do decline application, right? And then I'll add a diamond here. And then I say is second time, right? Because you're declining second time. So, so when you decline applications, listen carefully. So this is this arrow, oops, this arrow, I'll put it here. So if it is a second time answer is no, it will go here. If second time answer is yes, then you go straight end, right? And here you will say, do you see that this is just a simple meeting. You are going to spend weeks and days with the customer guys. And trust me, process get more interesting, more complex as you go further. But at the end of the day, business will get value. You know why? Because you're helping them to improvise the process. Like that. Make sense now? So you're not really, de decline things will go to round where you're gonna check. If it is first time, it will go to manual audit. If it is the second time, then yes, it will go to state end to them. People on phone, I'm hoping you are getting with us. You're understanding the process. This is getting more and more interesting. And now you can see the process. Now every step you should ask how long, how much and all. Again, there's no wrong or right answer. Good news, your bank people, your bank people are more knowledgeable about the process. You are no more knowledgeable about documentation. Once you document it, then you try. And then you can again say, okay, which activity is non-value activity? Which one we can eliminate? Which one, which activity we can automate by process? Which activity is taking time? Which is the problematic area? Where we get maximum complaint? And then you zero into that and your process will revise, revise and revise and revise. Make sense? Any questions so far? I have a small video in case if you have seen my agenda. I have prepared this video. I just want to take two minutes and just show you. In that process, in the in the video which I sent you an agenda in, in your homework, the video will explain about the pizza order. So let me just take a few seconds and give you the opportunity here because this video, this video I have prepared. If you, you can watch it, it explains the same draw dot io or lucid chart, whichever you like, but this is the BPMN and active process go here it does explain whatever we covered so far and and standard is but if you go further verify. there is a one exercise here will all be executed, executed according to the model makes sense or no so we need a gateway like which this. is diamond shaped each, each and every step like how this you know pool works how this 
you know, swim land works, how this event works, how activity works, how diamond works, everything step by step it explains. So you will have fun. Watch this video a couple of times and then you do the exercise. But it has like complete idea. Look at that. How complex it is. And you can develop that. Remember, you just need to develop one and you will remember this thing for lifetime. And there are a lot of symbols we are using. It does explain step by step. Draw.io is a very simple tool, very powerful tool to do so. Make sense? Now, I want to take a few minutes and explain about your homework because homework is very important. So if I go back here, please pay attention and ask questions if you have. Knowing COVID challenge, there are following process improvements are required. So there are many options we have. Please see on the screen so you will not have a problem or questions later on. You as an individual, you are going to pick any of this process. Pick any of the process. And then like example, shopping cart experience during COVID. Optimize air travel during COVID. Optimize healthcare visit during COVID. Optimize daycare experience during COVID. So first you document what people are doing currently. That will be simple diagram. Do you guys agree? Then you need to create another diagram which is called to be diagram with your improvement. Make sense or not? So how many diagram you need? Two diagram. First diagram is as is. The second diagram is to be. Now you need to identify what are the to be diagram, uh, sorry, what are the changes you are suggesting and from that change, what value you will deliver. So example, some of the things we did is, hey, we can optimize it so we save time, right? Some of the thing, hey, we are rejecting so many applications, but if we do validation upfront, then customer can correct it. This way we will not lose customer. So define your value in each and every improvement. So which I define here as a steps. Your goal is to identify key stakeholder, which is called VOC. So example, if I am going to Pizza Hut and I'm working for Pizza Hut, who are your key stakeholder for process documentation? For Pizza Hut, who are your stakeholder? Um, your stakeholder will be the manager. Manager? employee right customers right the delivery man right these are all your stakeholders you need to involve everyone so you can define the process yeah. make sense can you do process without involving them uh, no, you cannot. in that case you will not be able to make effective process right second document one key business process which we talk about identify current challenge so if you do as is there got to be a problem do you guys agree or not if there is no problem then there is no benefit benefit to hire you yes or no so you need to find real problem in the current situation and then you need to provide to be to be options to provide the better value make sense or not so as a ba your goal is to make sure you identify current process document it and say these are the real challenge we have and if we improve and go for to be these are the benefits we'll get i want you to document in one slide key challenges right now suggest few improvement again you don't have to improve hundreds of but at least have few improvement which is kind of noticeable so example 